Hello, my name is Megan Truick, lead estate planning guardianship attorney here with the Law Office of Brian Fagan. And in this video, I want to talk about guardianship and healthcare and navigating those medical decisions. This can be a very stressful time in your life. You have a special needs person or you have someone who has become incapacitated. You brought them to the doctor. No one will help you. No one will listen to you because you are not that person's guardian or you don't have some kind of power of attorney so that you can make those medical decisions for them. In this video, I want to talk about just that. If you have medical power of attorney, oftentimes a doctor may use it. However, when it comes to moving your loved ones from one facility to the other, or when you're coming to a place where you may want to try some other alternate type of um, treatment, some type of therapy, you may have a situation wherein the doctor or whoever may say, you don't have authority to make that decision. So what do you do? You need guardianship of the person for that loved one. You don't need guardianship of their estate because all you're trying to do is to make those medical decisions. Within this sphere that you have now found yourself, you have to seek an independent medical evaluation over the proposed ward, over your loved one. That's the name they give to the person that you're seeking the guardianship for. Within that independent medical evaluation, that doctor will say, this is what I think your loved one can do. These are their limitations. They may say that they are totally incapacitated or they may find that they're partial or they may find that they're not incapacitated at all. I've had some of those too. And when you have that independent medical evaluation, you have had the most important step to get to that guardianship of that person so that you can make those medical decisions, so that you can navigate them through the medical process. You get your independent medical evaluation. The next thing is to choose your guardianship attorney. I can tell you that we're not all created the same. There are some people that you'll find that you'll work well with, and then there are others that you totally, totally dread. They make the process even more laborious and strenuous for you. You choose your attorney, your attorney files the application, then an attorney ad litem gets appointed for that proposed guardian. You, the attorney ad litem, will work together to get that guardianship. The court will send their court investigator to just make sure that that person actually needs a guardian. Once that's all done, the notices are sent to your other family members, letting them know that you are seeking this guardianship. It's now time to go ahead. Set the hearing in front of the judge. The proposed ward will be there or maybe on camera or may not at all if their appearance can be waived. And then you can get guardianship for that person. And therefore, you will complete your guardianship certification. Of course, you have to do your background check because nobody wants to give guardianship to someone who should not have it and then you'll get your guardianship letters and you can navigate the medical process the medical system for your loved ones you can work closely with their doctors to make the medical decisions choose the right therapies just for them so that's how you navigate the guardianship process when it comes to the guardianship of the person my name is Megan Truick and we at the law office of Brian Fagan would love to talk to you more about this so go ahead click the video subscribe to learn more we're here just for you hello thank you for watching our video and because you made it to the end of that video we're offering you our new estate planning handbook this is a wonderful tool and I'm sure you like it go ahead download the link and let's get learning together